Hello, welcome to this Blender topic on creating a animatable text character. Press seven and five to look at things from the orthogonal view and delete the cube. Press shift A and the text. Press tab and I would like to use an S, a capital S as a matter of fact. Press tab to go into object mode. So here we have our S, but I would like to use another font just to make this a little bit more difficult, actually. Press F and uh, open up fonts and choose times. And then I would like to shift D duplicate this. Over here and then shift D duplicate. So we just keep these two for reference. It's, and this one here, I'll extrude 0 0.1. And uh, so now it's three dimensional. And then we do Alt-C to convert it to mesh. Press tab and look at that mesh. And as you can see, this mesh is pretty dense and it has a lot of triangles in it, so it's not the type of mesh that you really want to work with is in animation. And you can also see something that is uh, important that this um, uh, typeface is very carefully crafted. It's very smooth and has very specific proportions and it's desirable to stay as close to that as possible. It's not possible to stay 100% close because then you would have to have the same, uh, you know, the same exact uh, number of vertices. But we can reduce it to make it look pretty close. So I'll press tab to go into object mode and choose this one. This is the copy that I would like to work on. And what I do is I try to reduce the resolution by doing this first. I r reduce the preview resolution to 8. We need to extrude this, of course, also. And um, um, so there you go. And then I'll do Alt-C. And tab to look at this from the front. And this is the reason I want to extrude this. I maybe didn't have to, but this helps me to get this, the you know, non-triangular part of the mesh. And I can do control I and delete the other faces. So now I have this. This is still too dense of a mesh for me. So the next step in this process, I press 7 so I can look at it from the side or from the top actually, but the next step in the process is to use a modifier. And I'll use this uh, decimate modifier. I press tab because this is only active in object mode. And let's say we go down to 0, 1. And then you can see that there's a distortion to this shape. And you can keep kind of moving it upwards and I found that around uh, about 33 to 36 or something like that that's a pretty optimum number for this particular character so I'll apply that and then we have this uh, uh, this mesh here and what I would like to do is is to take just the edges here just these edges here Start to select. Okay, so now we have all the, the edges selected, and you can do Control I and uh, delete the other edges. So now you have just this this outline here, or these edges. And I'll choose uh, vertex mode so we can look at this, examine, because this is the point where you want to examine the mesh, what the potential is for this, and it looks pretty good to me because what the deal is is that you want to have as even as a dis of a distribution as possible of these so that there's a corresponding number of edges on the inside as of the outside and I'm not going to count these what I'll do is just um, go to edge mode and select the entire thing and I deselect the ones at the end here if it's a different character, you might have to do some other tweaks, but uh, 
in this particular case, uh, I want to use the bridge function to create a, you know, to fill this in. So I do W and I have loop tools activated, bridge. And loop tools are activated on, through um, user preferences and add-ons and mesh here, loop tools. So just wanted to show you that before we move on. If somebody doesn't have it, they know where to find it. And I still have problems here. There's triangles here and I have to solve those, but these problems are relatively small. In other words, I don't need to do a whole lot of uh, manual editing. So that's a good thing. And t in order to try to keep the mesh as close to the curvature as we had before, instead of you know, reducing this, I'd rather add something down here. So I'll uh, subdivide that and then just um, uh, select these triangles, Alt-J, and um, merge or convert triangles to quads like this. So now we solve that problem and we have another one down here and let's do the exact same thing. Need to be an edge and then yeah. And it's usually good to do these to select these one by one because sometimes you select all four and then it can turn out that you still have your triangles or it doesn't turn out the way you want it to. So that's that's why I did that. So this is a reasonable mesh, I think. Go to edge mode again, and uh, this one and this one here. And same thing here, just press, F, you know, select those edges, press F, it's all closed up. So this is a good um, starting point to create this character. And we'll just select, make sure we select the entire loop outside and just press E for extrude pull that up and what you have now here is something that you can use for two purposes so I will I will probably make another tutorial or another blender topic on this where from here you can actually start to create a sunken character then you'll have to fill in around it and build a flat surface that this is sunken down from but I'm not going to do this in this particular tutorial uh, but I'm just mentioning this because I'll reference this creation of the character uh, in the next in that tutorial So I'll just do the exact same thing as I did at the bottom. Use the loop tools and bridge it. And now I don't have to make any manual adjustment because it's already done. They're identical, both the top and bottom of this. So make sure we get those right. F, and we select those, and F. Okay, so there you have it. Here's a character, and this is uh, a, you know a quad nicely um, performing mesh. But if we add a modifier such as the subdivision surface modifier, then it um, looks like this. So to improve on this, we can of course just use some. Um, loop cuts or, or use control R to introduce loops to refine this mesh. And this is one part of it. And you can see that that improves on it. And then you need to do it also on the flat. So I'll do that here and you have to do it, press A and you kind of have to do it one, one side at a time. 
so you can actually slide it out. This is very, I think this is a very powerful function in Blender that you can actually do this. Remember, these are our, so to speak, contrarian um, edges. It slides out very nicely. So that's, that's an amazing, I think the control R tool is very amazing. So there. And you can see it now, it looks, it looks pretty good. It's somewhat, you know, it's softer than, than the character. And you could, if you want to, you can of course improve on that or make it, you know, stand out stronger or something. But at the same time, it's also, you know, a three dimensional character and some roundness is, I think, you know, quite okay. Uh, I guess you could use, um, if you want to, you could use, um, uh, you can try that actually. I just I haven't tried this before. I'll try the bevel, the bevel, um, and uh, turn down the width, and go here. And uh, yeah, it looks sharper then. I think. Yeah, I can turn this. Yeah, it looks a little bit different. But first of all, we have what we have to do is, uh, or I would like to do is. Uh, make sure it's all shaded smooth. So I press W and go to shade smooth. And then of course you're gonna see the normals, whatever normals there are not, you know, pointing the right way and then press control N, which you can do just as well through mesh and uh, normals recalculate outside. So, so if you turn on that, well, I'm not too fond of this actually because it's, mm, I just turn it off. I'll be content with this, you know, the level of softness that is in this. That is something that you have to decide um, when you, you know, refine the mesh, how tight you want to pull these edges towards the, the edge. So it's basically a matter of how you could actually just control this. And this kind of becomes you know, really up close and personal and you have to work with this. And that's what I'm trying to kind of avoid in this case. So I can just push that up all the way to there and then that looks much sharper, that edge. Okay, enough. So this is the creation of this character. I would like to add a material to it also while we're talking about the fact that um, I was thinking about something blue. Fresnel and Blinn, not quite as hard, like something like that. And, uh, Grab ZZ on the camera so we can get real close. And grab and then so this is the way this character looks now. And this is the end of this particular episode. And there's immediately after this, there's another episode about uh, using the armature on it. Uh, so because then you will see the effectiveness of this mesh compared to the mesh that is over here. So that's kind of the purpose of this to have these two com comparisons and, and you know what that why why you want to spend this time to recreate your character. I talk to you soon. I hope you enjoy this and um, we'll see, I'll see you soon.